This is the sixth video installment in the EOC Math 1 uh, released exam, starting with number 30. A college surveyed 3,500 of its students to determine if the students preferred music, movies, or sports. The results of the survey are shown in the relative frequency table below. How many more seniors than juniors were included in the survey? Okay, so this table, if you notice, most frequency tables have a total column. This frequency table does not have a total column. Okay, um, so what you're going to do is you're actually going to add a total column at the end. All right, and then you're going to add up the percentage. Specifically, it's asking about juniors and seniors. So we're going to add up the decimals here for juniors and add up the decimals here for seniors. So I've added those up here in the calculator. So the total um, percentage for, or decimal for juniors would be 0 0.24, and for seniors it would be 0 0.27. Now these are decimal representations um, out of one, or 24%, 27% um, out of the total people who were surveyed, okay? In order to get the actual number, um, you are going to multiply the decimal by the total right here, 3,500. So for juniors, I'm going to do 0.24 times 3,500, and that'll give me the number of juniors. Okay, so juniors were 840. For the seniors, I'm going to do 0.27 times 3,500, and that will give me the number of seniors. So that's 945. The question is how many more seniors than juniors? Okay, so you're going to do the seniors minus the juniors. Okay, and that will give you 105. So there were 105 more seniors than juniors. Thirty-one. A book club has 200 members. Each member was asked whether he or she prefers fiction or nonfiction books. The results are shown here. Which statement is true? Okay, so if you notice, the answers A through D are asking a lot about the total number of people um, and not the decimals or the percentages. So we're actually going to figure out how many people fit into each category. The way that we do that is we take each number right here, each decimal, and we multiply it by the total. Okay, so 0.32 times 200, that would give us the number of people in this category, which is 64. Okay, then we'll do 0.38 times 200, so on and so forth. Okay, I've already gone ahead and done that to save time, so I'm just going to write down the numbers in each of these categories. Okay, so which statement is true? Okay, we're going to go through each one. Six more 31 to 40-year-olds than 21 to 30-year-olds prefer fiction. Okay, so if we're looking at this, at the 31 to 40-year-olds, okay, 76 of them prefer fiction. And then the 21 to 30-year-olds, 64, 64 of them prefer fiction. So is that six more? Okay, no, it's not six more. So it's not going to be A. B, 38 members are 31 to 40 and prefer fiction. So if I go to 31 to 40, prefer fiction, I actually have 76. That's not 38. C, 43 members are 21 to 30 years old. Okay, if you look at 23, or 21 to 30 years old, and you go to the total number, that's 84 pe or 86 people. That's not 43. Lastly, 140 members prefer fiction. If you look at the total number of people that prefer fiction, it's 140, so D is the correct answer. The table below shows the distance a car has traveled, minutes, and then distance. Um, what is the meaning of the slope of the linear model? Okay, remember the slope is the change in Y divided by the change in X. Okay. Because the distance depends on how much time you've actually traveled, x is the minutes and y is the distance, okay? So in here, if you look at the change, okay, every single time that the minutes go up 25, okay, 
the distance goes up by 20 miles. Okay, so that means that the car travels 20 miles every 25 minutes. Okay, so 20 miles, change in Y, the distance, over 25 minutes. Okay, this simplifies to 4 over 5. Okay, so it's traveling 4 miles every 5 minutes. Okay, and you can see that answer there, C. 33. Um, the area of a trapezoid is found using this formula right here. Okay. Um, and then you're given the height and then base 1 and base 2. And then they want you to write the area of the trapezoid as a function. So I'm just going to follow this formula. Area is 1 half times the height. And it says here the height's 4. Times base 1, which is x minus 3, plus base 2 which is x plus 7. And then I'm just going to simplify my formula here. So 1 half times 4 is 2. Inside the parentheses, x plus x is 2x. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And then I distribute this 2 out. And my area is 4x plus 8. Lucy and Barbara began saving money the same week. The table below shows the models for their money that they had saved. After how many weeks will Lucy and Barbara have the same amount of money? Okay. Keyword same. Whenever um, the question is asking about something being the same, that usually means to set those two equations equal. So I'm going to take Lucy's savings and set them equal to Barbara's savings. And then I'm going to solve for x, and that will tell me um, how many weeks have passed by before they have saved the same amount of money. So again, just solving for x. Okay, I'm going to move 5 over there. Okay, so x equals 8, so that would be 8 weeks until they've saved the same amount of money. Number 37, Colin noted that various combinations of nickels and dimes could add up to 65 cents. Let x equal the number of nickels, okay, and each nickel is worth 5 cents, right? Let y equal the number of dimes, and each dime is worth 10 cents. What is the domain? Okay, the domain, by the way, that's a tricky word. The domain just means the x values that can be used in the problem. Okay, and for this case, it already tells you that the x is the number of nickels. Okay, so... Uh, the domain is just the possible number of nickels that you could use. Um, so what is the domain where y is a function of x and the total value is 65 cents? Okay, so here's the thing. It's 5 cents for every nickel plus 10 cents for every dime, and that has to equal 65 cents, okay? Now, what they're looking for here is basically what numbers can you plug in for x, okay? Can you plug in 0 for x, 1 for x, 2 for x, 3 for x, all of these, or can you plug in all these numbers, or all these numbers, all these numbers, so on and so forth. So for example, if you look at a, the first one that they want to plug in is 0. So if we plugged in 0 for x, okay, think about it. If we plugged in 0 for x, this would go away, right? And then you would have 0.10 times y equals 65. Okay, that would not be possible because dimes go up by 10 cents and you're never going to get to the 5 here, right? If you had 6 dimes, you'd have 60 cents. If you had 7 dimes, you'd have 70 cents. There's no way to get to 65. Okay, so 0 is not an option 
for x. So we can mark off a and we can mark off c. Okay. Now if you notice for b it has 1, 2, 3 all the way up to 13. For d it has 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. It only has odd numbers. Okay. Now let's think about that. If we plugged in a 1 for x, I'm just going to make a little table over here. If we plugged in 1 for x, okay, that means we have 1 nickel. Okay, we would have to have 6 dimes in order to have 65 cents. If we plugged in 2 for x, or we had 2 nickels, then we would have 10 cents. And then there's no way that we would end up with a 5 right here for that 5 extra cents. So any of our even numbers, okay, if we have an even number of nickels, we're never going to end up with 65 cents. The only number of nickels that works is if we have odd numbers of nickels. Okay, if you have three nickels, then you would need five dimes. Okay, if you had five nickels, you would need four dimes and so on and so forth. But you could only have odd number of nickels. So then that makes D the correct answer. The value of an antique car is modeled by the function stated there, where x is the number of years since 2005. By what approximate percent rate is the value of the car increasing per year? Okay, so if we find out how much it increases from one year to the next, um, then we can find the percent of the increase, okay? So it says that um, 2005 is our first year. So we're going to use that as, and the years, x is going to be the years. Okay, we're going to say that 2005 is year zero, okay, because you can't plug in years to a problem, you have to just assign numbers, all right, so for year 2005, we're going to say that's zero, and then for year 2006, that's one year later, so we're going to say that that's one. So we're going to plug in zero for x, and then we're going to plug in one for x and see how the value has changed. All right, so first let's plug in our first one, 107 thousand times 1.009 raised, okay, to the two-thirds times zero. All right, so again, for year zero, Okay, so we plugged in zero for x. When we did that, we ended up getting 1,000, or sorry, 107,000. Okay, next we're going to plug in one for the year. Okay, let's see what that gives us. So 107,000 times 1.009 raised to the two-thirds times one. Okay, and that gave us 107,641.04, okay? Now, we're looking for the percent that it's increasing per year, okay? So, we are going to take Okay, so I realized that there was actually a typo here. When you put this into the calculator, you get 107,641.04. So I just didn't write that one before. Okay. Now, in order to get the percent that it has increased, you're going to take the um, price after one year and divide it by the price the year before. Okay, so let's see what that is. OK, 
Okay, and it gives us 1.00599, okay? Now, this right here is a decimal. In order to change it into a percent, we move that decimal point two spaces over. Okay, so the change, or the original price, the second price, is 100, and let's round here if we did 0.6% of the original price. That second year price is 100.6% of the original price. That means that the increase was right here at 0.6%. That's the increase, um, or the percent increase of the value each year that goes by.